serious. We're having a baby. Okay, I think I speak for everyone when I say, ew. You know, Miss Banks, since you had that baby, there's something different about you. <laughs> going to MacArthur Park tonight. In fact, none of you are going to MacArthur Park tonight. Let's go back to 2009. We first left yes. the Fresh Prince. What happened? That's what we all really want to know. Why did Hollywood turn its back on Janet Hubert, the original Aunt Viv from The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? She was such a fierce and fabulous talent. Was this a case of black-on-black -black tension in the biz? Why did they drop her from the show like last season's fashion? Rumor has it, it might have been because another star found her tough to work with. Janet Hubert began her illustrious career not in America's cozy living rooms, but on Broadway's jazz hand-waving stages. Back in 81, she was all about the the spotlight, gracing productions like Dancing, The First, and Joseph and his Technicolor Dream Rave outfit. And let's not forget her performance as Tantamile in Cats. That's right, she was part of the OG cat meme before the internet even knew what a meme was. Then, in a plot twist so dramatic it could only be rivaled by a daytime soap opera, Janet vaulted from the land of show tunes and tap shoes straight into the heart of Bel Air. As Aunt Viv, she didn't just enter the scene, she owned it, bringing a level of class, sass, and yes, badassery previously unseen on the small screen. She was the Auntie Mame of the 90s, schooling young Will Smith on life's big lessons with a side of epic dance-offs. But like a hit sitcom that ends on a cliffhanger, Janet's tenure on the show wrapped up after three seasons, leaving an Aunt Viv-shaped hole in our heart. The departure was shrouded in mystery, the kind that would have even Sherlock scratching his deerstalker in confusion. What happened to make the original Aunt Viv vanish from the bank's household? The tale is steeped in intrigue, drama, and a sprinkle of sitcom shenanigans, minus the laugh track and the overly nosy neighbor. It's no secret that Janet blamed Will Smith for losing her role in the show. Their differences have been made public many times during solo interviews, but everything came out when the original cast came together after 27 years at the show's reunion in HBO Max. Will Smith and Janet Huber finally sat together after all these years and made up. Janet told Will Smith. But you took all that away from me with your words. You know, words can kill. I lost everything, reputation, everything. And I understand you were able to move forward, but you know those words, calling a black woman difficult mm -hmm. in Hollywood is the kiss of death. Both actors got emotional discussing their differences, which happened so long ago. Janet said she was not nervous about meeting Will Smith because she had done nothing wrong. Will finally said he was sorry, and the scene got so emotional that the crew had to stop taping. Janet had waited so long to hear those words from Will Smith. Nervous, not one bit. I've said for many years that I meet with them quite easily because I had done nothing wrong. So when you know that you've done nothing wrong, you have no fear of meeting someone. You have no fear of facing someone. You have no fear of sitting down. I was so calm. I felt so measured. I got emotional, though, when you hear those words. I'm sorry. You know, those things didn't happen. I went too far. Should we assume Will Smith is solely responsible for what happened to Janet Hubert? Joseph Marcel, Jeffrey Butler from the show, thought otherwise. He felt that Janet could not cope with the fact that Will Smith was the show's main character. The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and the leading actor in the show, the name that comes first, Will Smith. And you know, that that's how it is and that's how it, it should be. And I feel that perhaps Janet was not able to deal with that. He thought Janet and Will Smith should sit down and iron out their differences, which took 27 years to materialize. But unlike Will Smith, Joseph Marcel did not want to cut Janet's legs from under her because he knew it would finish her career in the movie world. In an interview, Joseph Marcel recalled how it went down in the final days, and Janet was gone from the show. Uh, Will called me and said, um, we can't make a deal with Janet. We offered her a compromise, and she decided she didn't want it. And then a couple of days later, she had a time limit on compromise and she decided she, she would not accept it. And a couple of days later, she called and said, yes, I wish to accept it. And they said, it's going to cost its sell-by date. And just like that, can you believe it? They just swapped her out in the third season like she wasn't important. And then, boom, she was practically ghosted by the entire industry. From making a cool 250 k a year to zilch, nada, nothing. 
As far as Hollywood was concerned, Janet Hubert was a dead body. She was labeled difficult to work with, and nobody would touch her. With so few acting spots available for black actors in the movie business, her career was officially over. Even when she wrote her memoir sometime later, nobody wanted to publish it. I spoke to JL before I wrote my little memoir that no one would take because I was poisoned. I was poisoned to everyone. Everywhere I walked, everywhere I went, everybody used it. It became the weapon. It became their kryptonite. And you were blackballed, essentially. I was blackballed, especially blackballed by the black community as well. In her own words, she's been hustling in Hollywood for a decade, only for some snotty-nosed punk to come along and snag a show, shaking up her whole world. Imagine losing your career at a time when you're pregnant, stuck in an abusive relationship, and not a single door in Hollywood swings open for you. Does Janet's still harbor any ill feelings towards Will Smith? Apparently not. Janet said she forgave Will. It was easy, she said. She felt the change in Will Smith when they met. He was not the same person he was 27 years ago. Janet has also changed. She had wanted all this bad blood to end for a long time. How easy, was how difficult was it for you to forgive him? It was very easy. You know why? Because I felt the honesty. I felt the change. Because he's not that same person that he was 20 at 21 years old, neither am I. Because I've wanted this to end for a long time. Janet thinks she has been blackballed by Hollywood and also the black community. She felt she would not have been treated so badly had she not been black. She was angry with the black press too. An apology from the black press. And I feel that I'm very old an apology from the black press because you labeled me witch. You murdered me, but I didn't die. She wanted an apology from the black press. So what's the deal, folks? Should the black press be sending out I'm sorry cards, or is this just another episode in the grand sitcom of life? I mean, really, are we talking about a full-blown dramatic press release apology, or can we just settle this over a laugh and a cheeky wink? Now, on to the real juice. Who was your favorite? Aunt Viv, Janet Hubert, or Daphne Maxwell-Reed? It's like choosing between champagne and Prosecco. Both fabulous, but oh so different. Janet brought the heat with her trend-setting styles and that certain je ne sais quoi. Then, in comes Daphne, flipping the script and giving us a new flavor of Aunt Viv. They might have shared a name, but honey, that's where the similarities ended. Styles, vibes, approaches to the matriarch role, chalk and cheese, my dears, chalk and cheese. During an interview, Tatiana Ali, who played Ashley Banks in the show, said the young people on the show always talked about how beautiful Janet was. You know, black beauty, and as a young black child, I thought she was radiant. And I thought that, and that I thought the spotlight was on her, you know, and that was something that I wasn't used to seeing. But hold up, let's chat about that iconic moment. Remember when Janet strutted her stuff in a pink leotard? <laughs> yes, that episode became legendary. Imagine Janet's shock when she discovered she'd be dancing in that pink leotard without a bra. She was hesitant, but let me tell you, at 36 and looking snatched, she absolutely killed it. It was unexpected, bold, and oh so memorable. So, who does it for you? Team Janet with her trend-setting leotard moment? Or are you riding with Daphne's take on Aunt Viv? Janet Huber portrayed a mother who is strong and confident and who holds her kids accountable. Can you imagine Janet as Viv Banks letting Hillary pose naked for Playboy in season four? After her role in Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, she starred in Dave's World and The Jamie Foxx Show. Janet had minor roles in the sci-fi film The Faculty and the comedy film 30 Years to Life. Did you know that you hear Janet's voice in the character of Denise Clinton when you play the popular video game Grand Theft Auto V. She is also the creator of JG and the BC Kids. Yes, she was multi-talented. She has osteoporosis and is the ambassador of the National Osteoporosis Foundation. Janet married Larry Kraft in 2005, whom she describes as an amazing man and an amazing father to her son, as her son, Elijah Isaac, does not have a relationship with his biological father. 
Larry Kraft accepted me for exactly what I am, she said once. I met the most amazing man. He has been an amazing father to my son because he doesn't have a relationship with his, his organic father. But he's been an amazing love of my life who accepts me for exactly who I am, no matter how crazy, no matter how sick. And I've had days where I've been in a wheelchair for the entire summer. I've had days where I've been on crutches, not able to walk. And so he's seen me through all of those things. They live happily in Montclair, New Jersey. She is 68 years old and her net worth is estimated at 500000 Did she deserve to get blackballed from Hollywood. And I'm so happy that it has been dispelled. But no, they offered me 10 weeks of work. They said, and you can't work anywhere else.